It's September 5th, 1698, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. Throughout history, beards have offered different things to different people, being used variously for warmth or as a symbol of masculinity, or at some points as a demonstration of status or even piety. Or in your case, just a representation of inner laziness. Yeah, that is definitely what's going on at this end. <laughs> but on this day in 1698, they offered something wholly new to Russia's Tsar Peter the Great, which was a source of income as he'd levied a new tax on facial hair. Yeah, and Peter the Great was a character to say the least. And he launched the policy in classic Peter the Great style at a banquet held in his honour upon his return to Russia after a fact-finding tour of Western Europe, of which more later. In front of a crowd of courtiers, officers and diplomats, he got to his feet and drew forth with a huge barber's razor, then proceeded to personally shave all of his bearded guests. Can you imagine, like, you know, if the Queen at the state opening of Parliament, after announcing what was in the speech, it was like, right, everybody, beards off. You know, no <laughs> warning. Just like, we've got this new policy, here goes. They must have thought he'd absolutely lost it, mustn't they? One of the accounts that I read said that given his political stature, none of his party guests flinched. But also his physical stature may have contributed because he was six foot eight. Yeah, and this proved to be his undoing on the fact-finding tour of Europe. His idea was that so at the time, Russia was very powerful, obviously very vast nation, but it was insular and it was starting to seem more and more out of step with the major European powers who were doing things like setting up colonies, making these scientific economic advances. Peter the Great came up with this ludicrous plan where he would go around Europe in disguise Guys, with a huge Russian embassy at his side, and he would be Sergeant <laughs> Peter Mikhailov. Wow, Undercover Tsar, a new reality series. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people were short then, and I know it was easier to go around in disguise because they didn't have photos, but yeah. he was the most famous tall man in Europe. He was famously the very tall Tsar of Russia, and he was rocking up in European courts with all of these high ranking Russian courtiers at his side, being like, It's me. Sergeant Peter Mikhailov, <laughs> normal person. And he had what sounds like an absolutely lovely time. He learned about shipbuilding. He learned about town planning. He learned about catching butterflies at one point. He learned how to pull teeth with a famous oh, yeah. dentist. And he also <laughs> entered a house in London and absolutely wrecked it. Oh, I heard about that. It sounds like the Dutch bit of his trip was the real fact-finding part because he was with the Dutch East India Company, where he actually really did learn a lot about shipbuilding. Then he gets to England, and it sounds like he just goes sort of czars gone wild at this stage. <laughs> he had these rowdy, drunken parties in Deptford and also posed for an official portrait, which really formed the basis of his then kind of calling card going back home. He had the this official portrait that was reproduced many times that showed, I suppose, something of the Europe that he encountered, which was greatly sophisticated compared to, in his view, the sort of agrarian Russia that he had left behind and was hoping to lift up by its bootstraps. Yes, but you're making it all sound like there's some rational connection between having been West and then coming back and banning beards. It's a completely <laughs> mental thing to do. I mean, it's basically just a fashion, isn't it? His mission was to westernise Russian society a bit, but asking people... To pay not to shave doesn't feel that Western, does it, really, when you actually say it out loud? I mean, I know that there was an element of truth, and I guess uh, Russian normal Russian citizens would have seen tradesmen from Europe increasingly flowing into the country with all their exotic wines and oils and stuff with their beardless faces. You know, they must have recognised to some extent, oh, yes, you know, there's a different, slightly more progressive world out there that doesn't have beards. Maybe Russia should keep up. But to try and actually instill that through tax is so crazy that it, I, I think the fact that we're recalling it at all and it is recalled as kind of one of the wacky taxes from history misses the point that yes he did do this but also he taxed bathing at one point fishing beekeeping like he was just keen to tax everything not just for these fashionable reasons but to guarantee some income for the state coffers just like any czar in history has yeah. needed to do his original idea was just to ban beards altogether but then it became obvious that this was going to cause an issue with the orthodox church the clergy of which traditionally wore facial hair <laughs> I know. Try and audio describe a Russian Orthodox priest to anyone who's never seen one before and how many seconds right. are you in before you use the word beard? <laughs> it's just a beard under a big furry hat. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so he had sort of backpedal on that. But it was part of a wider dress reform, which was, as you say, Ollie, targeted to westernised Russia. And so Peter also targeted what was seen as backwards Russian dress, you know, the traditional long sort of, it's called a kaftan, that sort of long, ornate overcoat. That had to be swapped for western style jackets and breeches. Women were supposed to ditch their loose, colourful, high necked dresses, if you imagine, you know, traditional Russian dress, and headscarves. And instead, they were supposed to be wearing European fitted frocks. And actually, so that nobody could claim they didn't hear about this new rule, Peter had mannequins placed at the city gates of Moscow to demonstrate the desired new look, which, as you can imagine, was really only enforced in cities. He also ordered the publication of a compendium of European rules of comportment, which contained helpful injunctions such as don't gorge like a pig, don't clean your teeth with a knife, and don't hold bread to your chest while cutting it. But the price that he set on his beard tax, well, it was a staggered levy depending on the person's status, and apparently wealthy merchants were charged 100 rubles per year. I wanted to sort of find out how much that would be in today's money. And one site I found translated what 100 rubles was worth in a manner that I really feel that Russians from the time would have been able to understand. So this site said 100 rubles was equal to 20 barrels of sturgeon from the north or four (laughs) expensive women's fur coats with gold and lace. I was like, wow, this person really got into character for (laughs) this explanation. I want all of my (laughs) airport transfer kiosks to uh, transliterate sturgeons from the north. As yeah, the how much mechanism. is this in sturgeon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or two kopecks for the lower classes. So this is the thing, there was a real range of how much you'd have to pay for your tax based on your income. But peasants were excluded, presumably because they all had beards and none of them could afford to pay even the two kopecks. Well, this sort of speaks to the reason that beard tax was never a massive earner. I mean, it was obviously very hard for the state to monitor the chins of all men in Russia. Peasants only had to pay a beard tax fee if they entered a city with a beard. Yeah, it's pay as you go. Pay as you go beards. <laughs> who the tax was really aimed at were the boyars. Yeah, we've talked about them before. They were the, the sort of the aristocratic class. They were recognisable by wearing long grey beards. That was their go-to look. So the tax was kind of aimed at taking them down a peg or two. You know, they were becoming very bolshy and it was a way of reminding reminding them who was in charge. If they chose to continue with their bearded ways, they had to pay 100 rubles a year. Everyone in Moscow who wanted to wear a beard had to pay 30 rubles, probably because Peter was envisioning Moscow as the sort of show city of his new westernised Russia. But once you paid, you would get given a token. You can buy them online. Did you guys look them up? You can buy them on eBay. I want one. You'd get silver if you were a member of the nobility and copper for an ordinary person. You had to carry it around with you all the time. Did you I, I see uh, it's all carved on the front of it? It depicts a nose and a mouth with a moustache and a beard underneath. It's quite funny looking. I love it. And on the token, the phrase money taken appeared to assure everyone that you were wearing your beard righteously. Um, But a later version came with a kind of cigarette packaging style warning printed around the edge that said, the beard is a superfluous burden. And you had to wear this around your neck. It's not like you could keep it in your pocket. You had to display that to everybody. (laughs) <laughs> it must have been quite a cool anti-establishment thing. I think so. And also wearing a beard must have been a status symbol that you could now go, well, look, I'm one of the people who can pay the tax. So I'm both wealthy and funky. And warm. I mean, that's the other thing. You're talking about some of the coldest cities on earth. Why wouldn't you have right. a beard? Like, I've done it before. <laughs> I've, I've shaved in the winter and suddenly felt noticeably colder. If I lived in Russia, I think I'd definitely have a beard. Now, over time, this law evaporated, essentially, as people refused to comply with it. I mean, that's what happens, isn't it? Like, however long it's on the statute books for, if people aren't actually doing something like this, then over time, it ceases to be a enforceable law. But it was still prohibited to wear a beard in the Russian public service until the 19th century, which seems crazy now. Um, But then again, it was only a decade ago that there were phone-ins about whether people should work for British Airways if they had a visible tattoo. (laughs) Tattoo tax, that's what we need. (laughs) I think it's probably no coincidence that it was rescinded by Catherine the Great, who obviously was unaffected by the beard tax. Didn't have to worry about her own facial hair, one assumes. (laughs) The most recent example that I could find of at least a proposed beard tax was in 1907 in New Jersey in the state legislature uh, where a member introduced a bill for graded taxation for men with beards and apparently argued that men who grew beards had something to hide and he pointed (laughs) to evil celebrities including Holmes the 
trunk murderer and Palmer the poisoner as the sort of <laughs> wicked whisker wearers. His proposed tax was that an ordinary beard would be charged at a dollar per year and people whose <laughs> whiskers were longer than six inches long would be charged two dollars per inch per year and apparently there was for men sporting a red beard they'd be charged an extra 20 percent but the reason for that was never clarified <laughs> thought, that's just that's just discrimination I, I think a ginger tax is a step too far <laughs> i agree yeah <laughs> tomorrow we'll say he was 21 i guess so it's a bit different. Yeah. i feel like a, a 50 year old king would be less inclined to climb the tree Love the show? Support the show. Patreon.com slash Retrospectors. Part of the ACAST Creator Network.